G'day guys, my name's Timothy from Queenslander Avery's. Today, we're gonna to be making some bird tea. So we're gonna make some bird teas today and then we're gonna try them over the next week. Uh, I encourage you guys to maybe go out and get some of these ingredients as well and maybe give it a go yourself. Um, and then at the end of the week next Sunday, we can maybe compare some notes. So I don't really know that much about tea for birds. Uh, I do know that it can help with things like aggression, feather pucking, um, hormonal activity. Overall, I don't really know that much at all. So the most important thing um, I think when we're making these teas is obviously making sure that the ingredients that we're gonna make them with are safe for birds. So I made my list of everything that I thought would be safe and then it has some little bit of research behind it to say that it is safe for birds. Overall, herbal teas and things don't really have much research behind them to prove that they do work for birds. So there's some equipment that we're gonna to use today to make our teas, some obviously our herbs. Uh, we've got this cute little teapot that we can uh, steeple our teas and leaves and stuff in. It has this little um, uh, catcher, wire catcher thing. Some more of these little uh, baskets as well. Some cute little spoons. Obviously you're gonna also need a kettle to boil some water and then some bottles to store it in as well. So one of the best places we found to find the ingredients that you're gonna to use to make your teas is the Source Bulk Whole Foods. Uh, they have stores all across Australia um, and the prices are really good as well um, and really good quality ingredients as well. Um, and a lot of them are organic, so it makes it a little bit uh, safer for birds. As so the Source Bulk Whole Foods, they also sell jars, but they didn't sell really, really small ones that I could store some of the herbs in. Uh, but uh, I got these from the reject shop and I think they were $5 for six. So when I made my list of the safe herbs that I was gonna use in my tea, a lot of them weren't available at the shop. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and tell you which ones I did get. So the first ingredient I got is some chamomile. That's the most widely known to be safe for birds. Uh, that's a nice organic one there. Also got some raspberry leaves. Um, these add a really nice pink hue uh, to the uh, teas. Some lavender, some rose petals and buds, some bee pollen, some aniseed, and lastly some fennel. So I'm gonna let you know a few little key points about each herb and why I chose them. So the chamomile is a really calming herb. Um, it's great for really nervous birds as well. So the raspberry leaf is very good for female birds. Um, it can help prevent some egg binding. Um, and apparently zoos use it as well uh, to cure egg binding in, in hens. Lavender is another one as well. That's a really nice calming herb. The rosebuds and leaves are gonna add some floral smell to the teas. Um, and then also it is a little bit calming as well. The bee pollen, I mainly chose to add some sweetness to the teas. Um, I know a lot of people use this for their dogs, but the end result of using bee pollen, I'm not too sure. I might need to do a bit more research on that one. This is aniseed. The claims for aniseed are that it can help with respiratory problems, coughs, um, any sort of uh, chest infections in birds. So the last one I've chosen is fennel. It's meant to help with things like constipation, uh, flatulence, and then also it can apparently help with yeast infections in birds. So we're gonna make four teas today. Let's get started on our first one. So the first mix we're gonna make is a just a general all-around tea. So we're gonna use some chamomile, small amount of that, some raspberry, Also, we're gonna use some rose. Got these cute little spoons, little spoon of that. Some bee pollen for some sweetness. Just a small amount of that. Also some lavender as well. So I'm gonna mix it up in our little bowl here, get it all really well mixed up, and then I'm gonna pop it into our steeping basket. Pop it in there. I probably made a little bit too much. I don't think we're gonna need much for each uh, blend. Uh, I've already pre-boiled the kettle. You don't want it to be boiling hot um, when you pop this into the water. So now we're gonna add some, not uh, freshly boiled, but still uh, quite hot water. I'm not too sure exactly how much water I'm gonna use. Um, so I'm just gonna add about one cup 
to uh, this little basket. Um, and we're just gonna steep that for around about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe longer if we need to. So while our first one is steeping and uh, starting to smell nice, actually, I'm gonna make some other mixes as well. So the next one we're gonna make is a respiratory, uh, sort of a wintry sort of mix. So I'm gonna, gonna go again and get some chamomile. Um, we're gonna put a little bit of lavender. Not too much. I'm not too sure exactly how much I'm gonna use on each one, but um, I guess we just gotta try. Uh, also, we're gonna use some fennel. I think fennel will be quite strong, so I'm not gonna use too much of that. And then also some bee pollen for uh, a little bit of sweetness, maybe a little bit more. So that's sort of our wintry sort of mix. So the next one I'm gonna make is for digestion. So we're gonna go in with chamomile again. Um, and then we're gonna do a little bit of fennel. Not too much once again. Um, also, we're gonna add some anisee. Now, obviously, if anything's too strong, you could ask, add uh, a little bit more chamomile um, or ingredients that sort of help sort of help mellow it out a little bit more. Um, and then, obviously, some bee pollen for some sweetness. Maybe a little bit more because it's going to be quite the fennel and the aniseed are going to be quite strong. So I think if we add a bit more bee pollen, it'll make it a little bit more sweeter. And the last one I'm going to make is a really nice pink tea. Um, so we're going to go quite a bit of the raspberry leaf. Um, also some rose, petals and buds. That will give it a nice sort of florally sort of um, smell and taste. Uh, and then also some, a small amount of chamomile, I think. Just a tiny bit, just to um, add a little bit more soothing into that one. So our teas have been cooling for around about uh, 30 minutes or so now, um, and they are cool to the touch. Um, I can really smell uh, the aroma coming off them. From my research, uh, how long are these gonna last, say, in the fridge? Um, I would say maybe two to three days at maximum. So when I was at the shop, I also got some cute little bottles. Obviously you can get larger ones as well. I'm actually gonna put the tea into these and then store it in the fridge. So all our teas are all made now. They're steeped, they're cooled. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to give them a little bit of a try and see how they taste. So the first one I'm gonna taste is the uh, raspberry uh, lavender one, which is meant to be the pink, the pink rose one. Um, but unfortunately, it did not come out pink. I think it was the chamomile that I put in there. Um, but it smells absolutely amazing. It doesn't smell as strong as some of the other ones. So let's give this a little bit of a taste. Oh, it has a very mild flavor. I honestly can't taste too much with this one. Um, I can definitely uh, smell the chamomile as I taste it. But it's, it's definitely not strong. So the next one I'm gonna taste is the general one. Um, this one had uh, chamomile, raspberry, lime, um, not lime, sorry, rose and bee pollen. Oh, it definitely smells a lot floral, more floral than the last one. Oh wow. It has a, um, it almost tastes like actual tea to be honest, um, but it has that chamomile smell. It's very plain as well. Um, it was diluted. I did put um, a whole cup of water in that one, um, but it smells amazing. Not too much of a taste. So I think that might be good for birds if there's not too much of a really strong taste in there. Um, it might um, be a lot more acceptable for them to want to give it a try. Um, I did add bee pollen to all of them. Uh, so that could be the thing that's helping it taste so nice. So the next one that I made was the sort of winter respiratory mix. Uh, it had chamomile, lavender, fennel, and then also bee pollen as well. So let's give this one a try. Oh, I can definitely taste the lavender. It's still very mild. Um, it could be the dilution of how diluted it actually is, uh, but it tastes 
pretty mellow. It tastes much the same as the other two, to be honest. Um, maybe I could add maybe a bit more fennel for that bit of a stronger flavor, but even birds getting a little bit of fennel might be good than them getting none, I guess. Um, but the bee pollen again could be making it a little bit sweet for me. So the next one that we have is the chamomile, aniseed, fennel, um, and then bee pollen in there. This one is the, the digestion. Oh, that tastes a lot different. But it doesn't taste, um, a lot of people don't like aniseed, but it doesn't taste like aniseed at all. But it has a, just a more, it makes it more bold to be honest. Now that I'm, I actually can taste aniseed now. Um, but I do like aniseed, so I'm, I'm not put off by it. But it definitely tastes bolder, if that makes sense. So now we've tasted all our teas, uh, now we can go ahead and think about how we're going to use it uh, to give to our birds. So the great thing about bird tea is that it's so versatile. You can use it in so many different ways. A lot of people will use it uh, to pour over the top of sprouts. Um, also people will use it when they're cooking for their birds in say mashed vegetables, um, also in bird breads and maybe some biscuits as well. Uh, but there is so many different ways that you can use it. Um, I think I might use it in summer when we make our bird ice blocks. And another way people can offer it to their birds is sitting down like you normally would in your daily routine and your bird comes over and wants to have a little bit of your drink. Um, just be drinking the bird tea instead, and then you know that it's nice and safe for them. Um, and then you can both enjoy that little bit of time together. Uh, and you know, it's not gonna make the bird sick. And then, <laughs> hey, it might even make you a little bit more healthier as well. So there is a few things that I really wanna make clear about the bird teas, is that you don't mix them with any sort of dairy. You have them plain, just like this. Uh, no milk, um, no added sugar or honey or anything like that that can make your bird sick. And although having the tea slightly warm um, is a little bit more enjoyable for the bird and us, just making sure that it is uh, not too hot that it's going to burn them. So in final thoughts about bird tea, um, I've never used it before. We're going to get we're going to give it a go this week. Um, I encourage you guys to maybe go out and get some of the ingredients and give it a go this week as well. Um, next Sunday we're going to do another video, just a follow up video to see how I went and you know if, if it's something that we're going to keep using for our birds. Have you ever used herbal teas or bird teas before? If you have, let us know in the comments below. And if you think this could help your bird, let us know in the comments below as well. So if you've liked today's video, don't forget to like, subscribe or comment below. And until next time, have a good one.